Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall in Northern California. It is raining, snowing, and very windy here. It's snowing in Grass Valley. Winter has arrived, it seems. We really didn't have much of a fall because the seasons have all been mixed up. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Gail Maxson, that you heard in the background, which I'm very thankful for. Hi, everybody. It is well with our soul. What are you thankful for this season? I'm thankful for so much. I'm thankful for you, and I'm thank you, thankful for God, for everything that he's done in our lives. And thank, thank you for my family, and thank you for our fellowship and everyone that we fellowship with. Amen. I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for Jesus uh, calling me and coming into my heart long ago and that he, he dwells and abides with me. I'm thankful for having this family online to fellowship with. I'm thankful that there's internet that we could still come together and uh, discuss things with. I'm I'm thankful that I have eyes to see and ears to hear. I'm thankful that I'm very aware that Jesus Christ is returning soon. I'm so very, very thankful for my wife and everything she does in my life. I thank you for my health and my blood sugar continually, uh, continually lowering and lowering and lowering. And uh, thank you for the strength I've been given. And thank you that God answers prayers. And thank you for my family that's here. I think you're thankful for me because I'm making you dinner. Yes, it <laughs> smells very good. My wife is home all week with me, and it's. I would tell you I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that my wife is off work all week, and it's a big blessing for me to have her here with me at home. It truly really is. Um, okay, so Watchmen on the Wall stuff, this is pretty important. Does everybody remember? Let me blow this up a, bit, a little bit. Does everybody remember that I talked about a news article would come out of Jordan? I'm sure there's people that will remember. There's there's people that have tracked the prophecies that have come forward from this ministry, and uh, and they remember them, and they remind me of them and stuff. Now, I saw this one uh, came out in today's news, and it's coming out of Jordan. And it's how the, the Jordan army is conducting maneuvers that are simulating a military battle with Israel. So uh, the military maneuvers in Jordan is being called Swords of Karamah, named for Israel's 1968 military operation against Fatah that took place near the village of Karamah and in which the Jordanian army fought alongside Fatah. The, new, the maneuvers are taking place in the presence of King Abdullah II and appear to be a message addressed to Israel. <clears throat> so uh, this is big news. When you see Jordan uh, running drills uh, to simulate a battle with Israel, it just goes on to fulfill prophecy about Israel being surrounded. And the Lord told me a word would come out of Jordan. And now here it is. Thank you, Jesus. It's really, really, really looking like an interesting close to this year. It really is. Another thing I want to speak on here quickly is this article I found last night. So now this article is being buried. It's no longer on the Dredge Report. It was removed. It was there yesterday. It was there today. And now it's just been completely wiped. It's coming out of the Wall Street Journal. And what this is talking about in a nutshell is this OECD. I'll, I'll summarize this for you. So this, this worldwide organization right here, and it is called the Organization for Econo Economic Cooperation. So it's headquartered in Paris, France, with 36 other countries that are members, 36 member countries. And uh, it was founded in 1961. And, and what they do is they watch uh, international tax. So you can go to their website here. We'll go real quick. But I want to read the Wall Street Journal. They don't really say a lot on their website. But let me tell you what they do. Because it mentions, I will, let me see if I can find out 
what 36 countries are involved in this. Belgium, Chile, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Mexico, Poland, Slovakia. Continuing. Germany, Greece, Denmark, Canada, Australia, Belgium, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, which was a word I received, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, United Kingdom, and the United States. And there's a map. So now what the, what 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 these this group, the OECD, is proposing a new global tax. Listen to me and understand this term, global tax. I put a link to the article so you can read it. But they're proposing a global tax. In other words, a worldwide tax. You see, because if you're going to have a worldwide economy and a, and a one world religion and a, a, a one world order, then you're, you're going to need a, you're going to need a one world tax. So this is interesting, and I believe that I believe that more countries would become involved. This is something to watch for. This global tax. I mean, it's just the countries involved, the timing, and everything. And what? And so remember this OECD uh, organization, Economic Cooperation and Development. One more story, and this is about Obama. The, the worst president in the United States ever in history. And that's me being polite. For real, for real. This is this is just for me to close out this video. Obama's acting strange. And I think anytime Obama does anything, the world should watch. Obama, and I want to know what your thoughts are. Please answer in the in the comments on what you think about this. This is an article coming out today. Obama is basically trying to put down all the other Democrats that are running. It's strange strategy. He's putting them down and dismissing them as they can't win. And there's still a lot of time before this election. And like, for example, this comment right here he said about Joe Biden uh, today. He says that uh, Joe Biden really doesn't have it. Uh, he doesn't have a bond with voters. He doesn't have what it takes to be president. He said that about his previous vice president. And he's done this to a couple of... He, he's, uh, he said that Bernie Sanders should never be president. And, and I agree. It, you know, whoa, 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 would we start agreeing with what's coming out of a... Obama's mouth. But what's what's the end game here, do you think? Do you think they're going to try to get his wife to run at the last minute? Uh, Big Mike, we call her. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, really, seriously, that's what's trending on Twitter is uh, hashtag Big Mike for Michelle Obama. But it, it's just a lot of strange things going in. And, and again, we wanted to... Uh, all the while Trump's having a, a rally here in Florida, big major rally, huge rally. You can see here, he's actually speaking. Let's see what he says. And then I'll end the video, just something to report here. The brutal menace of communism and socialism. Let's see what he has to we say. We are proudly supporting the great people of Venezuela. Cuba and Nicaragua in their righteous struggle for freedom. You know that. And to those who would try to impose the horrors of socialism on our country, I say again tonight, America will never be a socialist country, ever. Now, interesting timing. Because that's what Bernie Sanders is. And uh, so now it, it's almost as, as if him and Obama are in agreement? Lord have mercy. What's going on? What's going on with all this stuff? There's so many other things I could report. But you see it. You see it right in front of you. Matter of fact, Israel was uh, attacked today and they've been doing airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. 
in retaliation. I mean, just the combination of all this stuff is like reading the end of the Bible. And then people are fighting each other uh, left and right on YouTube. I've taken such a big step back from YouTube. I'll be honest with you. I've taken a major step back. I just cannot stand to be in the presence of such bickering. One side claiming they're right on this issue and denouncing and demonizing the other side, while the other side claiming they're right and then denouncing and demonizing the other side of this big, huge debate that's going on YouTube about salvation, why Christ is ready to crack the sky. And, and he, let me tell you what the Holy Spirit told me, because I'm not going to get involved in this issue. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, Paul, and he speaks very clearly to me on issues. He said, the problem is not these people at each other's throats calling themselves Christians. He said, the problem is one side is in error. And thousands and tens of thousands of people are encouraging them and following them and putting down their other brother sisters in Christ as if they have no sin. So if you've joined a side on this big, huge argument and debate, you have to check your behavior because one side is an error. And what that means is tens of thousands and tens and thousands and tens of thousands of people are in danger of hellfire why you just blast them and put your mouth on them. How Christian-like. It makes pastors and ministers want to take a step back. YouTube is toxic. YouTube is toxic right now. I'll continue to warn as led, but, you know, it's bad, folks. God bless you.